You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 25th of September, 2018. Our book is available for sale. We appreciate everyone who has purchased it. You want to know more, you can follow the links at the top of the page or just look under all of our postings. You will see in the show notes links to buy the book. It tells you everything about what we do here every day at the channel. Also, at the end of today's recording, you'll see a number of links, an introduction to what we do here at chartingwealth.com, along with postings of various trainings that we have, stuff that you'll find very helpful and important. What we do here every day, you can use, of course, with the four ETFs that we cover, that is the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, 20-year bonds and gold. We follow these for you just so you have a broad spectrum of both stocks, a commodity, and bonds, so you can follow all of these things. We also have a special training we're doing at the end of this month. We do it at the end of every quarter. It's our quarterly chart review. It's on the S&P 500. Why? Because we have an amazing quarterly chart that we can go back more than 20 years that shows you if you had been using it in the past, when to get out of the market back in 2000 before the crash, when to get back into the market in 2004 for the run-up, when to get out of the market before the 2008 crash, when to get back into the market right there at the end of 2010, beginning of 2011 for the latest run-up. Also shows you the Trump effect and where we are as we end this quarter. All that will be coming to those who are subscribers. How do you subscribe? You go to chartingwealth.com and sign up. Also subscribe at our YouTube channel. You'll see a link at the bottom of your YouTube page, a little subscribe button. Hit that. And also be sure to like our podcast and give us some comments about other things you'd like to see us cover for you. Let's jump into these markets for the day. We always start off, of course, on our weekly chart. And what do we see on the S&P 500 down for the day? 0.31%. And we started this week off with a red down candle. The derivative oscillator has been losing energy since it peaked back at the end of August, which is interesting. The market has gone a little bit above that. It did over uh, over the past week. But again, derivative oscillator losing energy. Price percent oscillator now headed down. This is just the first day of the latest weekly candle. Price movements just laying right there on the weekly trend line. So we're continuing to watch things and pay close attention. We don't have a weekly vertical crossover yet. Our two-day chart crossed over going down back on the 7th of September. And then, of course, it started going up since then, but it's still... It's not been enough energy to rotate that price percent oscillator or the derivative oscillator over. In fact, derivative oscillators started gaining some downward momentum. The last two-day candle was drawn on Friday. This latest two-day candle is only the first day, but it is a red down candle. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator headed down. And what does that, how does that show us what's going on in the four-hour chart? Well, down in the morning, down a little more in the afternoon, had a crossover on the four-hour chart. Again, that's our smallest chart uh, at in the morning on Monday the 24th, and actually derivative oscillator then crossed over in the afternoon. So again, what do we have going on on uh, the S&P 500? We're waiting to see if there's going to be a weekly vertical crossover going down or if there's going to be enough up movement to pull that two-day chart back into the same position as the weekly, which is in an up move. So one of the two will happen. The weekly either crossover going down or the two-day will crossover going up. Remember, both have to be moving in the same direction, up or down, for us to even consider a move. So we're on a hold pattern right now on the S&P 500. What's going on on the Qs? That's the NASDAQ 100. We'll remember we had a weekly vertical crossover going down. Those of you signed up for our text service, there are instructions how to sign up for that for free in the show notes. If, you're, if you've signed up for our text service, then you received the alert over the weekend. If you listen to the comprehensive review and forecast, you received the same one. If you're overseas, you can't sign up for it. It's only good in the U.S. But we tell you on the comprehensive review and forecast every Friday what's going on. And we did have one crossing over. 
And what were we looking for? Well, we're looking for an entry point. The, now we, we see that it's accelerating down as far as the Heiken Ashi candlesticks go and the price percent oscillator. Derivative oscillator also flipped over going down for this week, which is good. They should be going down. Now let's look at the two-day candle. What do we see there? It's a red down candle pushing through the weekly trend line as it should. Derivative oscillator losing energy. Price percent oscillator still headed down just the first day of the latest two-day candle. Now here's where we get to the rub. What's going on on the four-hour chart? It's still positive. We had a big down morning, and when I say down morning, you know what really happened? It's just when the market opened. It actually bounced down in the morning, when it first opened, that's when the market makers are in charge and everybody who puts in a market order gets screwed, typically. And again, want to read more about that. We, we explain in our book what Idiot Hour is all about. It's when the market maker is in charge. And if you put in a market order, you get hammered, typically. But what do we see happen around the 1030 mark? Market started moving up, moved up for the rest of the day. What did we tell you to do? Check and see what's going on in the morning. And around 10.30, if the market is heading down, you might consider jumping in on a practice trade. Well, that didn't happen, did it? So we didn't get in. And we watched the market continue to track up a little bit, never got anywhere near where it bounced down, still below that, got right up at it, okay, but didn't, didn't fly up above it. And so what we'll do is we'll stay on our four-hour chart and we'll watch it recovered a little bit in the afternoon. So what we'll do is we'll wait and see when the four hour gives us a trigger to jump in on a down move. Now remember, as you guys know, it typically works. These, four, uh, these weekly vertical crossovers almost always work because there's enough inertia to pull that chart over. So we'll continue to watch the cues and see if we have a jumping in point. So we go to the two day chart and of course, it's a red down candle pushing through that weekly trend line. And like we said, that four hour chart, a little up in the afternoon, we'll wait for a crossover and we'll look to jump in possibly tomorrow or Wednesday, or maybe not at all. Because again, we have to have the right triggers pulled before we pull that trigger and risk any of our virtual funds. Remember, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We don't give you market advice. We specifically don't give you market advice. We want you to practice with us in your virtual account. What do we see going on on TLT? Well, of course, we had a weekly vertical crossover there, one that's working quite well, is it not, my friends? Back on the Friday, the 14th of September, we had a down week last week and another week starting off down, down 0.26% for the day. Beautiful when these weekly vertical crossovers work and they are working gangbusters on TLT. Those of you wonder, how do you make money when markets go down? I'm going to include for you at the end of this podcast, I'm going to have a link to our inverse funds, how to make money when markets crash. So you understand what an inverse fund is. You can also, of course, purchase a virtual put on these things and see how that works. I want you to experiment with those things when we have inverses. So what do we see going on so far? Well, first day of our latest two-day candle actually shows a green up candle. That's average pace. Remember, it was down for the day. Heiken Ashi candlesticks. I'll also attach that training. I think we've had about 90,000 people take that. I do want you to also pay attention to that. Make sure you understand how Heiken Ashi candlesticks work. They show the average pace. That's what that means in Japanese. We see that the derivative oscillator has lost a, bit, a little bit of downward momentum, but that price percent oscillator is still hammering down. And we look at our four-hour chart. What do we see? Again, a sideways slide moving down. We see the derivative oscillator trying to cross over going up. So be cognizant of that. We've continued to warn you about concerns on that four-hour chart. It could just be digesting all that drop. But again, if it rotates over and starts hammering up on you, then of course you don't want to ride that to your detriment. But keep an eye on things. It was down for the day on Monday, which is quite nice. Price, move, price movement is well below that two-day trend line. Lastly, we go to gold. What is gold doing? We are hoping that at some point we're going to see a weekly vertical crossover going up that gold is bottomed out, but it hasn't done that yet. Derivative oscillators trying to rotate over going up. We have a little green candle drawing for the week. Gold, for the record, was down 0.02%, so uh, two-tenths of a percent down. Not much down, 
And we see that sideways slide in our two-day candle derivative oscillator continuing to lose downward momentum. However, price percent oscillator heading up. That's the first day of the latest two-day candle. And on the four-hour chart, up in the morning, a little bit of a pullback in the afternoon. And that four-hour uh, chart is heading down. So we'll just continue to watch as gold slides sideways and see if, again, it's bottoming out or if it's just resting and going to continue to go down. Hopefully, we're going to see a rotation over going up, and we'll be able to jump into an up move on gold. But it hasn't happened yet. We're not going to pull the trigger until and unless it does. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day on Monday, the 24th of September, going to Tuesday, the 25th. We love to hear from you. Please be sure to give us some comments there if you're on our YouTube channel. If you are at our website or just want to write us, chartingwealth1 at gmail.com. Subscribe, and of course, you will receive that quarterly chart review. If you're interested in long-term investing and not losing your ass the next time the market crashes or the next time it could, or as it continues potentially to go up, we'll try to give you that information so you can do your practice trades with us. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.